Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Championship Series Global Finals here at BlizzCon in Anaheim, California. Thank you all very much for coming in. At the start of our day, we're getting ready to go into our first match. I'm Nathanius, joined by three esteemed esports gentlemen, Mr. John Total Biscuit Bain, Johan Todd Merlo, and Nick Tasteless Plot. <laughs> How are we today, gentlemen? I'm doing great. It's good to be back. I'm excited for our match coming up here. I think this is my 11th time down at BlizzCon, so it's always good to be back. Nice. Todd, how, uh, how, how have you been enjoying being back in America, experiencing all the delights of California? I love it here, you know, uh, not, not just for the food and all that, but uh, the games have been amazing between all of these guys, and I don't think we're, uh, we're done. We've still got quite a few matches, and I know uh, these guys are going to deliver in terms of game quality. You had a busy year with, uh, with StarCraft and everything Total Biscuit. Uh, how, how are your feelings coming into this event? The bracket right now looks absolutely incredible. It was unfortunate I wasn't able to come in for the round of 16. I got a nice big catch up over the course of the last few days and everything. The game quality was amazing. It's only going to go up from here. That's right. We have so much awesome action, of course. We're getting ready to go into our first match. It's going to be a laser versus special. We're going to have a little chat. Let's talk a little bit about special first. Uh, Ar Artosis was up here. He's super excited. He cast this one, but he was telling us he's been following him forever. Special has been playing StarCraft for, for a very long time, Tasteless. Yeah, uh, we've known uh, Special, he's actually changed his ID several times, also known as Major formerly as well. We've known him for a long time. He was competing in WCG, representing um, Mexico way back in the early Brood War days. So although a lot of these pro gamers uh, in Korea grow up playing StarCraft uh, as children and in their adulthood, they become pros. Uh, I would say Special is the closest thing to that on the international front. Uh, I think what's really interesting about Special is that he did hang around a lot in the Latin America scene, and he was basically the unholy terror for a very long time in the Latin America scene. And everyone knew him for that, but on the international level, not necessarily. You know, he wasn't attending all that many offline events, and he wasn't really getting a lot out of it. But lately, of course, he has been staying in the house in South Korea, and he has been training like an absolute monster. It's showing in his play. It, what he was able to do in the round of 16 was absolutely phenomenal. He's showing game sense far beyond what he was previous to this. It seems like his status as a veteran has really started to come into its own now, and he's able to well, translate that into his gameplay. So that's terrifying you know, to see somebody be able to do that who's been around for that long. Yeah, uh, Special comes into the tournament as a player who has been competing for super long time, finally getting, I guess we could say, his best result basically ever coming right. into here. He's up against a laser, the only player to take a circuit championship in WCS this year, aside from Neeb, who is not in the top eight time. Yeah, finally coming into form, uh, I would say at the right time, you know, like scoring a lot of these points, having missed the first WCS event this year. But last year, I actually got a top four, which I think a lot of people were impressed by but kind of still doubting him as, you know, being a top four player in the world because he definitely had a route that made it easier for him. He called it from the start, he wanted showtime back then in the quarterfinals. This time around, he said it himself on social media, with this top eight, he already, he already proved that he deserved to make top four last year and he's going to try to exceed that here this time around. Uh, let's keep in mind, if he wins here, it's going to be an identical situation to what we had at the last BlizzCon, but um, Coming up to the WCS Global Finals, he managed to beat the person who knocked him out last time. He took out Dark very handedly. So he's already killed his older ghost. I think he should be in very good shape. I would actually say he's maybe slightly the favorite here. It's such an interesting thing to consider. When we look at what makes these players good coming from their scenes, a laser, being from Europe, European ZBZ scene. We all know how many good Zerg players there are, but the foreign Terran scene has, it's been lackluster for quite a while. Special is one of those guys that a lot of these players practice against, but he spent a lot of time in Korea owning his skill. Does, does a laser have the proper preparation for a match like this, Todd? Yeah, that's kind of the word on the street is that, you know, European Terrans have a bit of a harder time, but after talking with Snoop, he told me like, the top European Terrans on a good day, they're as good as almost any Korean. So maybe he doesn't play as much of a role. Like I got to speak with both of them and they both were equally confident. Elazer was saying that he sees worse matchup, but he still feels like he can make the grand finals because he trained so hard for this. That confidence is going to be very important. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get in to our first match of the day. Let's go to the stage with Smix for Special versus Elazer. 
Thank you very much, Nathanius. It is indeed time for our first quarterfinal match of the day. And as the boys on the couch have been saying, it is the only match with the two non-Koreans left at this event. For our first player, he surprised everyone when he topped his group, taking down the lights of Stats and TY to get there. Hailing from Mexico, it is special. <laughs> Facing special is the Polish Zerg player who is the WCS Valencia champion. He's hoping for back-to-back -to -back top fours at the global finals. Give it up for a laser. It's Mexico versus Poland. Only one of these players can make it to the top four at the global finals. In order to find out who will be advancing, let's head over to our commentary duo of Artosis and Zombie Grub. All right, thank you so much, Smix. I am Artosis alongside Zombie Grub, and we get to cast the foreigner versus foreigner match, Poland against Mexico. What are you thinking about it, Zombie Grub? Oh, it's going to be a great match, a great TVZ. Both of these guys have been training very, very hard, both in Korea for some time. Special a little bit more, but a laser getting that versus Terran practice. That's, you know, everyone's hoping for in Korea. It should be great. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I love to hear that a laser is so confident that he thinks that he can make it to the finals here in this this side of the bracket. So that's really impressive. But again, I spoke to Special this morning. He thinks he's going to 3-0 a laser. Okay, he said he's been practicing with Sue, he's been practicing with Rogue, and he's been winning almost every game. Well, his performance in the uh, Burbank studio was actually amazing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, versus Stats and TY. Not a Zerg, but still the best players from each of their races, Protoss and Terran, mm -hmm. to take out a laser, I can definitely see him doing it 3-0. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see if he can pull that one out. Of course, such a veteran, been around forever, whereas a laser rising up so quickly last year. Like last year, he barely made it to BlizzCon, hit his top four, and here he is again on the brink of doing that. If he gets two top fours in a row, that's the first time since we've had Classic. Yeah, do something for, like that at BlizzCon. And for a foreigner, that would be pretty mm. impressive. I know a laser is certainly looking for it. Last year, it was a bit of a, it was, well, well, not a bit of a surprise. It was a surprise that he made it to the round of four. So to do it again would certainly prove anyone who didn't believe in him wrong. Of course, like the year has done that with the Zipsis Championship. Both of these guys are looking to be in good form, but special. I think he really has um, perhaps a lot to prove. He didn't actually grab a title this year. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking for the BlizzCon title would be pretty <laughs> great. That would be a really big deal for him. And to be honest, if he can take out a laser here, you never know. If he's practicing against Sue and doing well against that, we already saw his TVT against TY. There's actually a kind of clear road for him to get to the finals if his TVZ is as strong as he's saying it is. Yeah, and I, I think it could be. It's uh, something he's certainly been training on while in, in Korea. And um, we saw the fruit of that effort. And I'm sure we'll see it again here, a laser. Um, I don't know. It's it's going to be tough. I'm personally thinking that special will take it. Mm -hmm. His confidence seems like at an all-time high, which is just uh, nice to see. A laser, too, but, man, special just oh. has that magic touch, I think. It, yeah. You know what? This is really nice because we do have two very confident non-Korean players. A lot of the times we'll get non-Koreans in past years in StarCraft 1 and 2. They'll get here, and they'll say, you know, I'm going to try my best, but I, I'm not really holding out. Whereas both these guys are looking at taking down that championship. And, of course, that has never happened in StarCraft. In now 19 years, it's, it's just not something that ever occurs. That's true. I really like that point. Two confident foreigners going into this tournament. Something we do sometimes lack, but they're going off against each other, which is a little unfortunate, mm. but they did hope for this. Both of them were very yeah. excited when they were picked. 
Yeah, they'd much rather play each other than, you know, innovation or rogue or hero or something like that. Uh, we have all the map bands and maps here. Does anything stick out to you here, Zombie Grub? I oh, mean, no. the Catalina band for a laser <laughs> looks pretty normal to me. Yeah, and Ascension to Ire for special makes sense as well. I mean, as far as the, you know, the all the maps we've ever had in StarCraft 2, this one's actually a pretty good map pool. Mm. But Catalina against Terran as a Zerg, that's difficult. You know, that's, that's too difficult. Just get rid of that. The Reapers don't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. No one's really going to be a lot of Reapers but still the map type is just difficult. And then Ascension to Ire, it's always such a tricky map to do any of those pushes across. You yeah. know, it's huge. That's just like really the problem of it. And so that makes a lot of sense for me. It, it certainly does. I like that we're starting with Abyssal Reef. This is kind of like the map in StarCraft II, really ever at this point. It's got yeah. great racial balance. It gives us a big mixture of quick games and giant macro games as well. So I think it's going to set the tone pretty well for these guys. Abyssal Reef is an amazing map. Truly, really it can be done. Uh, you know, any race can favor it. Any style can be played mm. on it. So I'm thinking actually a little bit about mech right now. Ooh. Of course, special can throw out mech games, and yeah. I would love to see at least one in this best of five. Mech Depot, though, going to be map number two between a laser and special. So that's a really big one. It, it's kind of like that Ascension to Ire map that you were talking about, where it really takes a long time to travel across. And we've sometimes seen Terrans have a hard time against Zerg there. Yeah, very awkward. You know, where you spawn is just like it's a bit of a curve into another curve. But when the rocks are broken down, then it finally looks like, you know, you first see Mech Depot, you're like, oh, it's a small map. Mm -hmm. And they have to figure out, like, oh, no, there's pathways. When those rocks are broken down, that's when they actually really gets mm -hmm. heated up, so. All right, well, we'll be getting this game started pretty quickly here, guys. We have everyone in the lobby. Make sure you get out there, hashtag BlizzCon, hashtag WCS, and let people know this is the world championships of the hardest game out there, StarCraft II. And we are about to have a crazy TVZ followed by a lot of other great matches here today. Yeah, every single match today has some type of just historic moment to it. You know, we have so many rematches. We have Foreigner versus Foreigner. So guarantee Foreigner into that round of four. But which one will it be? Our Terran or our Zerg? guys are almost ready to go. They look, they look quite ready. Mm, hey, you know, th this year, it, we've had such a dominating story in the WCS circuit from Neeb, right? Elazer, the only other player able to win a tournament. And, uh, you know, it, it's really kind of all been about Neeb, even knocking out special multiple times this year. But mm -hmm. here we are in the top eight. We have special going up against a laser who will crown themselves as the most successful foreigner at blizzcon this year it looks like we're about to find out oh this is gonna be a good one guys we're getting into game number one of a best of five starting off in the top left as the blue terran he is special And of course, his opponent getting top four at BlizzCon last year. Make some noise for a laser. Oh, this should be good. Abyssal Reef, an awesome map to start things off. No one doing anything uh, too aggressive, of course, to start things off. Although I do sometimes like to see that quick and dirty mm. tier axe special is going to be going for <laughs> the macro game as well as a laser. Well, I tell you why. If he is actually in practice, as he says, beating the two best Korean Zerg players, I don't think we're going to see anything too cheesy out of him. I think he's going to want to go ahead and play those longer games against a laser because it's kind of well known that this is a laser's weakest matchup. We generally think of him as a really strong Zerg versus Protoss and Zerg versus Zerg player. Yes, exactly. And that's what he showed uh, last week, in fact. So, but he said, you know, he admits that it's not his strongest matchup, but he is prepared. He thinks he can actually take out Special and advance on. Looks like he is a little <laughs> bit worried yeah. about something cheesy, so we check with his drone. Uh, between that Overlord placement at the third base and the, the drone popping up to check if there's any proxy barracks, a laser really kind of making a statement here in the early game. He wants to go later as well, does not not want anything cheesy to occur, but that's not what Special's up to. Just going for a standard Reaper expansion. Yeah. So a laser, of course, is going to have to worry about that mid-game choice. The Special go for, well, what's typical nowadays, certainly a factory opener. We don't have any 2-1-1s much 
mm -hmm. anymore, that is. Uh, but then what beyond that? You know, there are definitely Hellbat pushes that Special can do. There's that mech yeah. thing that I talked about that he's really got to keep a keen eye on. And if he's not going to go for Blue Earth's which I believe he's been doing more lately, so I, mm -hmm. I feel like he would, but he didn't quite open up the way the Dark would. We'll see about that. It could be difficult to actually figure out exactly what Special is doing. Yeah, you know, I, I would like to see some quick Overlord speed get in there, scout what Special's up to. You know, if you get caught off guard by that, things can go very, very wrong. Uh, and especially against Special, because I actually consider him one of the best mech Terran vs. Zerg players out there. Even right when Gumiho started to pop up very strongly with mech, Special was showing the same type of style and a similar level. Well, what's like, so good about Special is that whenever a Korean would like perfect something, no matter mm -hmm. what it was, he seemed to just be able to grab it and do it as well, like with the mechanics as well yeah. as the strategy. So it's great to see him you know, here in the top eight. And we do have, I guess, uh, his build on our way to, to go for the factory. Second gas has been added on. So up to that starport while scouting a laser. A laser is going for the third base, and Special knows something too mm. tricky is happening. Just a bit of poking and prodding going on with this Reaper. You're not really able to get anything done at this level. The Zerg Micro is too good, and of course, the Terran player are going to be too strong to really lose this Reaper early on. You're just kind of you know, keeping tabs on your Zerg opponent. Is he overmaking Zerglings? He has the right number of drones, right? When's his third coming up? So good intel on that side, but until this Overlord speed is done, a laser's not really sure what Special's up to. Exactly, and he did, in fact, get Overlord speed. So as I said, something he's been doing lately, I feel like he went to Korea, and then it was like, oh, that's a really good upgrade mm -hmm. to have. <laughs> and it certainly is. Of course, the Vikings going to try and still take out some of the scouting here, but it usually guarantees you uh, a scout, at least into the main base. It's when those tricky builds, or like they hide the armory somewhere, Somewhere way across the map that maybe Overlord Speed doesn't work out for you, but he usually sees everything. A little bit of poking there at the front as the Overlord flies in towards the main base, sees the add-on for that starport, but it's not a Banshee on the way, just making that Viking you were talking about before Zombie Grub. Yeah, uh, Viking into even Raven, especially on Abyssal Reef, certainly is very popular nowadays. Even double Raven, go for the harassment on that hanging natural, and then as well, clean up creep later on has been a huge benefit in getting a Raven first. Now look at this kind of safety play going on from a laser. He's adding a Roach Warren, so definitely wants to be careful not to lose anything to mass Hellions, to mass Hellbats, anything like that. But really, that's not so much what Special's going for. Yeah, he's still making them, but focusing more heavily on his economy, making his command center. Yeah, we have that third CC in the front as well, so easily scouted by a laser if he just sent a ling up there, basically. And Special, oh, you already saw it with the Overlord. Special is going for bio. We have Stim already mm -hmm. underway. And there's a little bit of Hellion pressure going up to six. We have a laser going for mm. an Overlord drop <gasps> and quite a few Ooh. roaches. Really cool. Two overlords being morphed right now for their dropping capabilities. Quite a few roaches coming out. Certainly some queens will come along as well. Oh. But this Hellion pressure might help him to spot what's going on. Dude, seeing that overlord just come out here is actually huge. Mm -hmm. He also sees the roaches, and he's I think yeah, he actually knows exactly what's going on. The Raven's going to go back home and try and help out whatever it can. Uh, the third CC is a strong wall, but the bunkers are definitely necessary. Oh, yeah, getting those bunkers up is big. Now a laser going to go ahead, drop some Zerglings in this main base. It's actually way ahead of his drop in the natural. So just one thing that Special has to deal with right now is these Zerglings. The Hellions are able to come back here almost no problem, though. Initially, the Marines are actually already on top of that Overlord, but that's always going to be a threat. There's the attack at the front. It's coming down now. The bunkers are ready to go, but there's not much to put in them. How much damage can a laser get done? Coming up with the Ravagers, just bombing down that supply depot right away. The Ling drop in the main base once again. Eight SCVs, nine SCVs already falling. He can't take care of it. He's just going to lose the main CC SCVs, but if he can keep himself alive, three CC will make up for a lot. The bunker's being mass repaired. A tank is firing away on the roaches, and he's just barely holding on, but he stops repairing for a second. Oh, man, a ton of damage. All those corrosive biles connecting with SCVs. 44 workers already killed, and a laser getting so close to a victory early on. This has got to be a victory. 45 SCVs is just too much to come back from, even with 3CC. The remaining lanes are going to try and get off of that tank, but there are still a lot of Hellions left over. But Special has got to know that he's in a world of trouble. Oh, every single thing going wrong there. Look at that SCV kill count. 45 workers falling. Just such a brutal, devastating blow to Special's economy. He is down to just five SCVs. That is a lot to come back from, but Special not willing to tap out of this first game yet. Certainly there's something to be said about just being like, you know what, that's a victory. I'm going to mm -hmm. take it. Like, okay, 
We have four other games potentially to be played, but now special is going to try and stick in this. But it's so difficult. He's not only mm. missing SEVs, he's missing medevacs that usually allow you to do that counterattack damage to try and bring you back. He's only just making them. Uh, this is very tough for Special. It looks like he's going to go ahead and push out. Doesn't want to leave the game quite yet here. See if he can get that counter damage done. Of course, a laser, you know, he didn't make too many drones this game before that attack because it was so early. So maybe, just maybe, he can get some counter damage done. Oh, he does have a bigger army supply. A Ling counterattack is going to try and pull at least something back. And those, well, those supply depots are burning, <laughs> so... The Hellions come back, Special continues with the rest of his army, but everything really counts here. He needs the full might. He's all inning, really, and a laser has had a lot of time to realize what's going on. Okay, what is Special going to do? Where will he hit? He sets up this first siege tank, gonna go ahead and utilize his Raven to push back some creep, but a laser has that high ground with his Queens and Ravagers. Oh, that Raven can be very, very helpful. Not lose that just willy-nilly. A laser, I don't think he's gonna be able to buy time into the plus one carapace, but that would be helpful. He's trying to crank out as many units as possible. That ramp's gonna be dangerous. The tank sieges and is taken out by oh, Crocevile. Beautiful Crocevile's coming down, but the Queen's doing a great job as well. Healing and hitting everything in the sky. A stim forward here from Special, trying to pick off these very valuable fighting units, and he is killing a lot of the army. There's just so few army units left for Special, though he picks up what he can and gets out of there. Unfortunately, where does this put him in the game overall? Lasers up to almost 60 drones and four bases with upgrades now done on the way. I mean, what does Special do? That is that is a good question, especially with this Hydralisk den coming up. The fact that we have two evolution chambers upgrading a laser's army as well. Just everything going well for him. A laser has a great economy in that fourth base, whereas I mean, Special is still trying to rebuild, you know? He doesn't even have his two-base economy back online yet. Yeah, I mean, I feel like what he's got to hope for is a laser getting complacent, but being already up to 64 drones now, that should never really happen. In fact, a laser is the one now pushing forward. There's the GG. A laser takes game number one. All right, some very convincing play from our Polish Zerg. You can see he's quite happy with himself right there. Taking down Special with a very nice timing attack, utilizing the Queens being dropped out, a Zergling drop in the main base, tons of great Crocibiles as well. Yeah, that's a beautiful build, honestly, nowadays. Again, so, so many people going up to that Starport for Raven or for Banshee, honestly, just being an Overseer a lot of the time. But the Raven especially. At Bilsa mm -hmm. Reef, you're going to expect the Raven. You're not going to worry about that cloaked Banshee, and you're going to know that damage can be done, but it was the Lings mm -hmm. that really started it all. They yeah. just dominated, and then the Roaches and Ravagers did the rest. Some of those corrosive Biles were just so out of control, killing a lot of SCVs, repairing the bunker. It was well done by a laser. But I do want to be clear here. This was a bio opening here with a quick third command center from Special. So I don't think the rest of the games will necessarily look like that, especially our next map, Mech Depot. Yeah, uh, this is going to be, well, for certain, if Special likes that opener, there are ways to defend against that better. Um, the little bit late at notice, as well as just not realizing that the drop's going to happen in the main initially. He could try and do that build again but he'd certainly be on guard, and we might actually see him mix things up, go for his own aggression first. All right, well, you know, this is it being a big map and kind of knowing special style. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he pops out something like Mech here, uh, plays into that longer game, but of course, a laser, he's dangerous, can just flip the switch, and in a matter of seconds, makes these decisive moves that can end something. That was a nice opener. I mean, I talked about liking something aggressive to start off a best of series. A laser just took a little bit of time. That's certainly what he did. And Special will have to be on the lookout. But there's so many tricks that uh, Terran could do as well. You know, we mentioned the armory. And, you know, maybe that's something that Special noticed. That Overlord dipped in and then went right back mm. out. There's actually not a chance for this guy an armory. In a different game, that could be a big deal. The laser's going to try and be greedy. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Uh, if he could end up doing that with all of those Hellions. But in this game, at least, Laser did have those early Roaches. So what will Special do to try to counteract the aggression that a Laser has brought so far in game number one? Mech Depot going to be our next map starting up now. All right, let's get into it. It is game number two in this best of five. And in the bottom left, as the Blue Terran, he is Special. And his opponent, the Polish Zerg, winning game number one. It's a laser.
Uh, I expect to see a bag of tricks from both players, special mentioning who he's been practicing against in this matchup. They aren't macro zergs, or well, I mean, they're good macro zergs, I'm gonna be wrong, but that's not only what they're known for. Certainly, Sue would have thrown out quite a few mm. all-ins and cheeses to get special prepared, so one game might be down, but special might be thinking like, nah, I still got this. Yeah, yeah, I think he's still gonna keep his confidence there. The one thing we should point out, though, is that this is special's first time at BlizzCon. This is the mm. biggest stage in all of StarCraft Esports, where we've seen a laser come here and win matches before, right? He got top four. He's comfortable here. Yeah, for me, it's really a story of like special being the solid, great player that he is. You know, the macro, the micro has been working out. He took out two awesome Korean players just last week. But then there's a laser and a seemingly like just like magic at BlizzCon, mm. you know, like suddenly things start lining up for this guy in a way that just I, you can't really explain other than he's prepared for best of series and he's prepared for the pressure. All right. So looking at these build orders, Zombie Grub, what do you think about a laser here? He goes pool into hatchery, getting his gas a little bit later. Uh, might be looking to, uh, well, of course, last game he went for the hatch for still got to that mm -hmm. overlord speed, but this one actually gives you those lings a little bit earlier, and he could be trying to get special just thinking, uh, you know, something, whoa, wait a second. Oh, special didn't actually, wait, where's... Did he not even he, scout here? No, he's not, well, he doesn't have a yeah. command center is what I'm looking <laughs> at, man. Like, yeah. That factory before command center, uh, I was talking about a laser's lings doing something, but I think it's a lot more important to talk about what special is doing. He's got marines checking the lings for, for links, probably, but mm -hmm. as well as Overlords. This SCV might be doing the same thing. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. A lot of times when you see four links run around the map like this, it'll be to try to like pick off the SCV building the command center because the Reaper will be across the map, but Special doing a completely different type of build here. Yeah, this is very interesting. So the SCV continues on, and maybe it'll be something a little bit sneakier than just a scout for those links, but that SCV is going to be stalled out for a little while, the timing on it. A little bit suspicious. The factory is done and currently building just a single Hellion. Now he's going to slow down the command center just for the time being, getting the uh -huh. SCV to back off. Ooh, a yeah. proxy starport coming up as well. All right, something uh, definitely very special. <laughs> uh, no one's ever make that <laughs> joke again. Uh, coming out from special. Now, does the laser detect that something is wrong? Something's a little bit off. Like, why the mm. extra marine? Why was the command center a little bit later? Why was that SCV out there? And why isn't it scouting yeah. my third base right now? It, it was, certainly was a very fast factory with reactors. So both of them kind of throw off by what the other player is doing and now with this very quick star report coming up I mean does he just go into some liberator harassment that's exactly what he does good call liberator start things off we'll see if he adds anything more later but a laser I mean he's not thinking he really has to scout soon he still has time he probably thinks that it's going to be uh, maybe just the Ravens again or e even Banshees but a liberator this quickly will certainly be a surprise and an armory is being added on as well doesn't okay. have too many Hellions but he's getting there <laughs> I tell you I think we are definitely going to be seeing mech out of special this game some heavy harassment starting out at least a lot of Hellions heading towards that third base with the liberator almost completing right now of course as that armory pops up as well don't forget hell bats can be transformed uh, a laser going for a Bailey Nest in a lair already would have usually all the tools necessary for Hellbats or even Banshees later on, but this very quick Liberator is going to be a surprise. It really is a question of how fast a laser notices. Uh, he still doesn't quite know that something mm. is up. Uh, doesn't even see that armory. Kills the no. links before they can get up the ramp, so he doesn't quite know what's going on. Now the Liberator coming around, not really getting any kills quite yet. The Queen on top of this, a laser seeing everything that's happening. I mean, perhaps that was a shock, but he certainly dealt with it very quickly. A couple of Hellbats, the rest of them, there we go. Now five Hellbats attacking the third base. He could just retreat from it, though. It's kind of take this on later once he's done with the, uh, the Liberator, but his Queen's actually getting caught in the splash. Yeah, quite a few Zerglings going down here as well. Looks like two Queens might end up Falling. Oh, I love this liberation zone going down as well. Blocking reinforcements. Special kills a queen as it pops out of the hatchery and starts to do work on the building itself. There weren't a lot of queens to start off this game. He's actually rebuilding them right now, but he's pulled them from the main base. Once again, the pool is drones away. He's definitely going to be losing 
mining time, but will he lose a lot of drones? I don't think so, but just the amount of queens, the amount of uh, lings that he's had to make, and Special actually gets out of here with most of his units. I tell you, this is really great play from Special, really utilizing this tempo advantage, running in once again with these aliens once the queens turn around to deal with that liberator. Oh. And it looks like a laser is not quite ready. Those are four hellions. They're going to barbecue. Actually, no, he's going to turn them into hellbats. I don't know. This gives time. A, this gives a laser time to pull them. Might have been better off as just hellions. The liberator is not being paid attention to. There we go. Now racking up the kills, going up to 12 as the natural still is under attack. The multitasking of a laser being truly taxed right now. Drones dying all over the place. Finally deals with those hellbats, but the liberator just keeps repositioning itself, and a laser can barely mine from his main. Yeah, this is really starting to add up. All the lost mining time and just the interruption of Zerg's flow, basically, is a big killer. Laser not getting the game that he wants at Whoa. all as another Liberator pops up and he has to move the Spore Crawler again. Just non-stop Liberators coming in, picking off drones left and right. Now a Medivac on the way as well. Definitely can get some drop action going and even is making some Cyclones. I love this follow-up. You know, if a Laser had thought that Roaches were like an easy defense to most of these things, well, the Hellbat specifically, I suppose, plus one Cyclone follow-up would have just demolished them. Mm. It's not Roaches. We actually saw our own Lings and Hydras, but they're still going to be plus one. They're going to be accompanied by Hellions, especially is full on going mech. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be so tough for a laser to deal with. He's probably hoping that this is his time to breathe, but it's not. No, it certainly is not. And with this medevac coming up, this is super dangerous. The Cyclones heading across the map as well. All of the units of special coming to bear towards a laser's third base right now. And it looks like it's time to make some Hellbats. A couple Banelings could help out. Then the Lings with the surround of the Cyclones, that's really like the perfect scenario for a laser. And just, you know, his numbers aren't looking very good. He's just trying to place all the workers. He's still down in workers, and he's now extremely down in army supply. Some battle mech coming up to do some battle against this Zerg player. A good split on the Hellbats. Those Cyclones just nailing everything from behind. The tanking of the Hellbats being so helpful. Gosh, this looks like it's going to be a move to win this game. The Banelings do collide with the Cyclones but they can take a couple of hits. They're not the ones that get healed by the medevac, but they can still Ooh. be micro is now special, showing off his micro, killing most of the queens, and now the third base. So much damage being dealt, and GG is called. Special taking game number two and tying up the series. Wow, what a non-stop aggressive build order from Special. Bit wonky, you know, the command mm. center being a bit later, and then the proxy starboard against Zerg. I mean, sure, against Protoss, but against Zerg. I loved how he taxed the multitasking of a laser. He's running up to your third base with the Hellion, so you start micro against that. You might even pull extra queens to fight that. Then suddenly a Liberator to the main base. The Hellions run away. You send your queens back to the main to deal with this Liberator. The Hellions come back in. Special was just everywhere, and a laser was not quick enough to deal with it. And it hits before that time where I feel that Zerg's, you know, they have an okay number of queens, their creep spread has gone to the third base, they even build, like, maybe a cautionary spore crawler. It hit all before that. It was a big surprise for a laser that just kept surprising him. And as good as he tried to calm down and, and take a breather, that's when the, the battle mech came in. He was like, well, I guess uh, it's over. Uh, that was very well done. Special showing us a lot of kind of new strategies, new builds uh, coming up, even utilizing some strange mech play against TY and TVT, now using this kind of aggressive, quick battle mech style against a laser here. It's very hard to prepare for a player that's showing such a wide diversity of builds. Yeah, but a laser started this off with his own clever build, and it could just be them slugging against each other, looking like uh, to try and surprise him. I mean, a straight up macker game. I think that's where special things that he would certainly take mm -hmm. it, but a laser has uh, some things to say about that. Okay, so our next map is going to be Interloper. This is one of the maps we don't see quite as often as a lot of the other maps, especially in best of threes. It generally gets banned out. And that's because it's, it's a little bit crazy. There's a lot of rocks on the map. It's kind of close as far as travel distance. What do you think about this matchup in particular there, Zombie Grub? I think if you, you know, if Catalina wasn't the obvious first veto, only veto in this case for the Zerg player, then Interloper is usually mm. a follow-up, right? But there are ways to take advantage. I mean, just because it's a smaller map with chokes doesn't always mean Terran has the advantage. Certainly Zerg can't get aggressive, and the counterattack potential of this map that has so many weird spirals can also be mm. very large. 
Yeah, that's definitely true. The games that we have seen on this so far in the WCS Finals, a lot of them have been kind of base trades going on. You go one way, your opponent goes the other. What are you going to do, turn around and chase his army when he's already dealing damage to you? No, you got to go for the throw. So with both the first games being aggressive so far, wouldn't be too surprised to see a repeat here on game number three. Yeah, for sure. The players are almost ready to go. An interloper is going to be, well, it's uh, it's still, it's actually just 1-1, one, one, so we have quite a few mm -hmm. games left over. We certainly do. Going to at least game four here. Special versus a laser starting up in game number three at the WCS World Championship Series. Best games in the world happening right now. Mm -hmm. Should be no different. They've been, this series has been full of surprises so far. What does interloper have for us? We're gonna find out in the top left once again. He just tied up the series. It is the Blue Terran Special. His opponent falling in game number two, our Polish Zerg. It's a laser. Oh, special. Proxying a starport against Zergo is a little bit risky with their overlords flying around, but managed to actually have the perfect build that just really taxed a laser's expectations and uh, crisis management, mm -hmm. really. His uh, base defense usually is pretty good, I would say, but out of you know the mid game when he has lings on hydros. Yeah, it's a little bit hard. You know, you have to be very exact with Zerg in the early game. You have a very set number of queens. The creep isn't connected between all your bases, so they're very slow moving around. Of course, you have less lings. You're trying to squeeze out as many drones as possible. But Special is not going to abuse that again. Previously, he went for a gas first, but here, just going for the same time as his Rax. Oh. And a laser not going for the pool first either goes back to game number one. His lanes didn't really end up helping him at all because there were three Marines dealt with it very easily. And then it was more about uh, them scouting, and I guess he just didn't realize something really was uh, missed last game. Or if he did, he didn't expect it to be proxy liberators. <laughs> it's certainly not something that he sees every day. Now a Reaper expansion going back to a normal build on both sides, at least for the very opening part of this game. Going to scout some with that Reaper. Of course, a laser hatchery first. Probably grab his speed. Maybe Overlord's speed as well this game. Yeah. He went for those Overlord drops in the first game, which I feel is just becoming more and more popular again with Terrans going for the 1-1-1 one, one, one almost always, and then going for their Raven as well. A lot of games, not just Abyssal Reef. You could see something aggressive like that again. But the Reaper does pop out, especially goes up to his factory. He did add on Hellbats later in the last game and did eventually go into Mech as well. Mm -hmm. But will we actually see the Macro Mech? Well, we don't know. All right, a second gas being added right now for special. So it looks like he'll tech up at least a little bit more before his third command center. Of course, getting that reactor for his factory while he starts poking in. But this is the standard dance of a TVZ opener. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, not much that really uh, goes differently. But if you can get all of the links, mm. that's actually kind of impressive for the Terran player. If you can get a drone at this level, that's pretty good. Yeah, you normally don't really see much die, like a ling, maybe two. Here he got three, he started poking the drone some, but with the queens out, gonna be hard for Special to do much more than just poke in to see what's being produced. Of course, he wants to recheck to see that third base, and then if he can, get back into the main. The laser goes for the Overlord's speed, and this is like, you know, he wasted it off that first game and ended up being a very useful tool to be aggressive. He added on the Roach Runner Loose Shaper as well, but anything really, even just a single Ling drop to harass is always nice. Mm -hmm. Now, the third base going up and the Starport for Special here, continuing to produce those Hellions. Do you think that we should be seeing him go into mech play again from here? It, it kind of looks like the initial build we saw in Abyssal where he went for Stim. Well, he actually adds on two Widow Mines Ooh, and a Medivac. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> All right, so a Medivac or Widow Mine drop against a Zerg player is definitely, again, like going back to like, oh, versus Protoss makes mm -hmm. a little sense, but versus Zerg, <laughs> a little bit surprising. Uh, of course, this is going to be looking like a regular, perhaps, Hellion Viking opener. Yeah. So this Overlord is going to think that it actually has all the information. In fact, Special just started and yeah. canceled Stim. That is really super clever. What a crazy move here out of Special to start Stim as the Overlord comes in and then cancel. We did see that a laser only really scouted him once before. So if you're a laser right now, you are sure that he's going bio. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a laser recognizing that was a problem is going to go back in but this Reaper is going to see what a laser's up to. A Roach Warren and Sport Crawlers were added on. He uh, sees that Medivac and is actually targeting it now. Oh, no, that's the Vrox. There's the Medivac at the third base. 
Oh, the queens are in the wrong position. <laughs> All right, we'll see what he can get done with these mines. One mine gets dropped down here at the third base. Just hits the egg, so not that much damage so far. Another one in the middle of everything, and a laser sends over a sacrificial link. Yeah, hopefully he remembers that one of mines at the third base isn't transfer over a lot of drones. He did build score crawlers. He can just pick up and move over there, too, knowing where the Widow Mine is. But Tank and Raven on the way. He is adding on barracks. So that stim wasn't like a fake into mech. Mm -hmm. It was just the, the opener that was different. Yeah, kind of uh, interesting there <laughs> that he, he like starts stim, cancels it, makes me think, oh, is he going mech? No, he's just trying to give as much false information to a laser as is possible. Now, a Hellion drop coming out, going after some of these drones, already getting three. That's already a weak medevac and now almost dead and cops in a rock in a hard place. Those queens, looks like he's not gonna even go to bother microing it anymore. Uh, might survive, but the Hellions <laughs> trying to take on the Lings. Yeah, he thought it was dead already, but microing his Hellions heavily here erasing a lot of these Zerglings. That Widowmine looks like it is going to reset, so he might get another kill off of that as well. Yeah, that's kind of a cool move. You know, the Lings had responded too hastily. They all would have died to the Widowmine, and I think that had kind of happened. But Drones hitting barbecue, 10-11 is not so bad, and the Medivac, I think, is still alive. All right, <laughs> trying some more harassment still. He finds out that his medevac is still there. <laughs> 11 drones having been killed. I got to tell you, so far, I'm really liking Special's position in this game. I do as well, but there's something interesting that happened with this build order, I think, where the Widow Mine and Hellion opener, I'd say it's actually pretty safe. You get a lot of scouting from it. You get a potential harassment, but, you know, maybe not. He built a bunker, I think, afraid of a Ling attack or perhaps Roach is just going across the map as well. And he did it on production way before anything else. So it's actually kind of like a safe build, but it's also going to give him that army a little bit faster. Perhaps not with 1-1, one, one, but definitely with tools to do a strong push on Interloper. Okay, the double engineering bay is up right now, getting a lot of upgrades. Double evolution chamber, of course, going for a laser. We could see this go into a standard macro game for him here, but a laser has fallen a little bit behind due to those drone kills. A little bit. He is definitely recovering. He starts his 1-1. I thought Special got a second engineering bay, but only researching plus one right now. Yeah, hopefully that is not a mistake. Or he, uh, he didn't line it up, so maybe just didn't have the gas. That would be... Actually pretty important, and I think that might have been the issue, not having enough gas immediately. You think you tapped it, but you didn't quite. I'll see if he notices. But a laser going on to Hydra's, Ling and Bane Lang Hydra, the standard in macro TDZ nowadays, going up against Bio. Mm -hmm. So classic as far as the last few months are concerned. Uh, th this is really a battle that has forced a lot of Terrans into going into mech quite often, but as kind of a counter to this, we have seen some Terrans adding a second factory, going mass siege tanks, and especially on a map like Interloper, it seems like that could be a good idea here for Special. It definitely could. He has a lot of very strong units, including these double Ravens that are live, healthy, and actually have quite a bit of energy. They're looking for the harassment right now, but they can also help up clear up creep and add some very important auto turrets later on. Okay, right now some Lings coming in, trying to harass this third base of Special. The Siege Tank going to deal some damage to them, clean them up. Not too much damage dealt right now. Of course, the upgrades for both sides still being created, so no one wants to really commit to an attack until they have all those done. Very hot pickup. Two medevacs just to float around. Not usually going to be able to do too much. And I don't think Special is expecting a lot, but with the double Raven harassment, was really hoping to get some surprise. There's so many auto turrets that a laser really should just say, like, okay, you can take it. As long as it doesn't <laughs> grab the upgrade. Okay, it doesn't. All right, all right. He gets that plus one armor to finish. And, oh, oh even oh, if he oh, had oh, it. <laughs> Imagine oh. that, but at least that finishes up for a laser. If you deny even one upgrade in a situation like this, it becomes a big advantage. It does. And uh, that upgrade, speaking of, Special did finally add on the plus one armor, but it has delayed his upgrades overall. Going for that second factory, when you get a lot of tanks in any map, mm. it can be very good, especially against mid-game Zerg, but especially in Interloper, there are certainly some tricky spots that a laser has to consider. Oh, you're certainly right about that, but as we get further into this game, I notice a laser making some drop overlords. I think we're going to see some baneling drops coming out, harass that economy while the game gets bigger and Ooh. bigger, and there we go. We'll see if he can kill a bunch of SCVs here for Special, who, by the way, has an insane economy right now of 77 workers. Yeah, that is very strong. His 4th CC is already halfway done. His combat shield only just recently started, so he's not going to be doing a push anytime soon, but I noticed 
noticed that Special made a couple missile turrets, and I wondered where those were. Obviously, you knew that it wasn't mm. going to be Mutas. I think those are anti veiling drops. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that, because a laser is one of these Zerg players that loves to harass your economy a little bit later oh. on. And, uh, that is so strong. Oh, my God, this Marine actually finding what's going on, giving him so much time to actually counter this veiling drop. I don't think there's going to be any harassment damage from a laser. No, it doesn't look that way. A laser just gives up on it for now, maybe when the Marines are pulled away with an odd F2, it can be uh, an opportunity later, but Combat Shields is finally finishing up and Special is making his way to a laser's fourth. All right, this push is going to be so strong with the Siege tanks. If he can keep those alive, if he can buffer for them, a huge amount of damage can be dealt to Bailing Hydra. Right now, we have Special sieging up outside this fourth base, but a laser with a big counterattack. Oh, it's not doing anything. That could be a very strong move on Interloper sometimes, and it's not strong enough here. Special continues moving in, and the hatchery looks like it is going to go down. Oh, an awesome snipe right there from Ooh. Special. Finally, a laser does clean up most of that army, but Special retreats to his siege tanks. There are a lot of siege tanks left over. They don't have too much protection, so perhaps a laser is going to clean this up at the cost of a hatchery and quite a few units. A laser is successfully denying Special's fourth base. And oh, <laughs> what a bailing bomb. That was great uh, expectations from a laser. Now just jumps on the tanks with the rest of the lings. They are 2-2 two -two against 1-1 one -one and they're demolishing Special's reinforcements. A laser starting to get a bit aggressive, but let's not forget he's down on just a three base economy right now. So even though we see him do a bit of damage, we still have Special in decent shape here. He's taking his fourth base at a great time, and a laser just now transferring drones over to his bottom left expand. That was a really good counter attack. The bailing bombs are amazing. But you're absolutely right. So laser took more damage than Special here. Special still on 78 workers and four bases now. Gonna lift that main orbital eventually. Finally, his ravens are taken out, huh. but they get a scout in the main base, and they see that a hive is done. You gotta assume multis are on the way. These ravens have really been worth a lot for special throughout the game. Look at this one, still alive somehow. <laughs> wow. 16 kills, just a thorn in the side here of a laser. While special has secured an additional base, he's on 2-2 upgrades, producing a lot of marauders, just knowing that those ultras should be coming soon. I do believe he's gonna try and drop those banelings again in the natural base. Those were waiting, but a missile turret's there. Is it gonna grab it before it's loaded? Yes! Wow. Special knows exactly what a laser's up to. Seriously, it feels like he's really prepared for this style of play out of a laser. We haven't seen any Baneling counterattacks do any damage to his economy, which is allowing him to macro like this. Look at Special right now, almost 200 supply coming down, stimming and taking out that hatchery. Another base kill for our Mexican Terran. Kite is winning, he's a double, oh, that's an amazing oh. fungal. Grabs most of the bio and the tanks, cannot hold up on their own. Even though these ultras don't have their armor, a laser is looking for some momentum. That was just a great fungal out of a laser. Still fighting strong here despite being at a supply deficit. He is getting some great units, but still taking damage all over 9, 10, 11 drones killed here by a Liberator. Really good Liberator. Even going to be micing away from that Spore Crawler. Laser's army is looking for something to do, but I don't think it's big enough or secure enough to actually go after the fourth base, which he still has eyes on because of those two lings. Viper is now out as well, and a laser can certainly get uh, a lot of uh, cost efficiency from his spellcasters as we just saw you know even though right now it really looks very good for special he's got more supplies got lots of tech this is a scary army and right now we have a laser coming in a great fungal goes down the ultra is doing a ton of damage to the bio army but will it be enough i don't think so there is layers and layers of that terran army tanks were just going far back in the bio well there is enough of it to certainly take it out the scan goes down to catch the infester sees the attempted bailing bombs as well a laser that was a really risky fight to take he was not at a great army yeah. He was still recovering from the economic damage. And look at what his economy even looks like right now. He's having such a hard time. No units down here in the bottom left. So this drop from special might force a cancel on this base for a laser. He is just not able to put together a defense. Oh, gosh. Cancel does go down at the very least, but now drones are going down. I think that Raven is still getting <laughs> some damage done. I think it took up a building in the back of a laser's base. And special, by the way, on his way to 3-3, a laser can't even afford to start it. 
Another Liberator flying in, nothing here to stop it. A nice abduct to save a lot of those, and of course the Hydras come up, but Special is everywhere, stimming down, killing yet another a laser base. What is this, four bases, five bases, killed already by Special in this game. <laughs> and a Liberator just killed a couple more drones. Special is actually everywhere, back into the main base, perhaps looking for the snipe on the Ultralisk Cavern. Some lings are spawned, but it's not enough, and a laser realizes that too, has to pull back his entire army. He is just everywhere at once. He's even trying to take down the Ultra's Cavern. Can't quite get it, but we can't count a laser out quite yet. He's making Festers. He's making Ultralisks. And these two units together, well, they can really kill a Terran army if you mess up at all. Yeah, and certainly we've seen special about one or two moments where certainly a laser got his worth. The fungal growths could happen again, but I think special's now going to be a little more on point about his scans. He has extra bases now. Another planetary, I believe, uh, being put down in the main. Actually, no, that's his main being put down on the front side. So if he ever loses momentum, that is going to be vulnerable, but I don't think he's going to be losing that anytime soon. A blinding cloud goes down, but the army is not getting bungled. Where are the investors? A huge concave against the Ultras. They're trying their best, but it's not enough. Oh, and GG is called. Special takes the lead for the first time in the series, up two to one. He got to really highlight his mi micro and multitasking mm -hmm. in that game. The Liberator is actually being micro. It is already an amazing feat. But then on top of that, his army control was good at the end there. You saw how awesome it was. And he had drops going down as well. Special, truly a terror to be reckoned with. Oh, seriously. You know, you talk about his, his micro, his multitasking, and both were fantastic. But let's not forget these well-placed missile turrets and Marines spotting the bailing drops, not allowing a laser to do any damage to him. And, you know, we so often talk about the Korean Terrans, but for as long as I've known Special, he has modeled himself after them. He has worked on his speed. He has worked on the multitasking, on these top-end strategies. And I think looking at him here today, that is obvious. Exactly. If you just take away the names and just watch that game, I'm thinking, you're, you're probably thinking like Innovation, DUI, maybe Maru, you know. He's just looking very good. Um, perhaps the time in Korea was what did the magic. Maybe mm. it's just his time to shine, but a laser simply has to do better in the macro game. He definitely fell pretty early on in that game and never gained back his momentum. Yeah, very, very tough stuff going on for a laser. It is match point for special now. What do you think a laser has to pull out here in map number four? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think his macro game can be very solid, or has doubting it a little bit here, especially since his usual tricks didn't work out, the Baneling bombs as well as the counterattacks. The next map is going to be Acolytes, and mm -hmm. if there's a, an uh, opportunity to have the best macro game, this is the, that's the map, mm -hmm. but I would say the same thing for Special. What do they have in, plant, in store here? As now that Special's up one, he could try something a little bit wonky. Already did, yeah. so <laughs> could do it again. And this is a weird map. Let's not forget, you've got that back natural, you know, that's very easy to defend, but not against necessarily drops. You, you can kind of get up to three bases relatively easily. There's gold bases on the map. Yeah, well, <laughs> but everyone forgets about that, right? They almost are never taken early on in the game anyways. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking, you know, Acolyte has been very popular for Nidus Worms lately. That's true. Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, if Special goes with the 3 CC, as you know, he does an okay amount, then he could be in trouble. But we saw last game that I think he specifically had that in mind. That's why he added the barracks first and then the engineering base. Okay, we'll see if a laser goes down that aggressive route here in map four. He has to win or he is out of the world championships. Here we go in a game number four. Oh, this could be it. It's in the bottom left. He's up two to one. It is special. His opponent fighting for his life here on Acolyte. It is a laser. Showed an amazing build in game number one to get him an early start, but has since lost it to Special's wonky build and just really good macro mm. play. Oh, he was really on top of it. How many SCVs did he lose that game? Like one? I guess, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, <laughs> when, when that is your MO, right? When you get your economy up completely, your mules are dropping, you're dealing harassment damage to Zerg the whole time, and they aren't able to do anything back to you, that's a recipe for success. Yeah, it is. A laser got to the right tools. You know, he finally got those infestors. He had a viper as well, but the infestors, they got those two great bungles, but just like there wasn't much follow up to mm -hmm. it. And then when he finally got more infestors to actually have the combination, his army was just too small. There's been too much damage done to his economy.
Definitely have to agree with that assessment. Now, looking at how a laser is opening here, he's expanding to his back natural. So that's, it's quite safe to play this way, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a little bit risky to go for the gas expand, but it is Acolyte, so mm -hmm. this is the one opportunity that you think is going to be okay. Maybe the Overlord checks see if it could be like a cheeky T-Rex, but honestly, T-Rex it up in a lot of places on Acolyte. And Special doesn't seem inclined to go for the early, early aggression. I think a laser is playing smart here. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. And this leaves him open to a lot of different builds that he can do. When you see someone skip gas like this, they're kind of banking a little bit more minerals. Sometimes later on, you'll see a couple gases added, maybe go into some sort of Roach Ravager type of play. Uh, possibly even going up into that Nidus Worm that you were talking about before, Zombie Grub. Yeah, Nidus Worm play has been very popular on Acolyte. That's, I would say more often I see that off of two bases, but the third one can be very tricky. That's kind of a, mm. a benefit of a map like this, is that you don't get to really see that you know, third or natural, really, but basically you don't get to see the drone count. You know, you're really rarely mm -hmm. going to be able to get back in there in time to see that it is a little suspicious. But if it's not going to be that Nidus play, if he is going to play a macro game, we do still sometimes see Mutas on this map as ah. well. It's like the last map you see Muta play yeah. on. <laughs> that would be interesting, but I know a laser, I think, prefers the Ling, Bailing Hydra. Yeah, I definitely would agree with you on that. Uh, could throw special off, though. We'll see what he ends up going for here. Now, of course, with the Queen out and that back natural being taken, as you said, it's hard for Special to really figure out what the economy is for a laser. You can always hide tech back there. So that's why he's jumping up from the side, trying to see what's down there. I believe he did at least spot that there was creep, right? It was, yeah, OK, yeah. he was close enough to see that. So he knows that it is three bases and see nothing suspicious yet. The Reaper can say a lot, of course, because speed. Speed lingers are in the game here. He might even, I don't know about skipping speed, but he's definitely holding off on it with two gases now. Finally underway, but for me, I'm doing a special. I'm paying attention to his build because Acolyte could be mm. that macro mech game that I kind of want to see. Oh, yeah. I mean, if they don't give us one of those in this series, I'll be a little bit sad, but uh, don't worry, ZG. We're going to have Gumiho in the next series, <laughs> so I promise you, you will see some mech berserk today. That's exactly what I was <laughs> thinking, really. So you're, you're probably right about that, but special does have a bag of builds, and mech is one of them. It's going to go for the Raven once again. Raven Hellion here. Laser goes for a fairly quick lair. Mm. So it's skipping Zergling speed, right? Very late gases, but the quick lair. Lots of queens. Mm. This is looking more and more like that Nidus that you were talking about before, but we'll have to see if that's uh, that's how Laser wants to go about the, the game that could knock him from the tournament. No speed. He's trying to actually stop this Reaper from scouting. It gets back into the natural base where you would hope that it would just never be able to. Seize the lair, which is, I mean, a little bit faster. Laser's getting on a four minute lair, so that was like 345 or something like that. Hellion's trying to get some damage done, but a laser with the quick pull away. Oh, very good defense so far. Losing three of Jones, that's not really that big of a deal, especially considering this opening where it was more mineral heavy. So, very strong play. A Roach Warren coming down ramp for a laser, but he doesn't block the ramp. The Hellion's going up into the main. Oh, no. The Speedlings, they're, they're not even made. They don't even have speed. The drones are going to get barbecued here. Oh. So much damage being done. A laser has to pull away, but he's being chased down. An awesome drone block between that spawning pool. It does mitigate the damage a little bit, so only 10 drones are going to go down. Well, all right. Well, 10 drones is a little bit painful. We see the flank coming up from the Raven's auto turret. 12 end up falling in total, plus some lost mining time. Oh, we do have that mech game, but we also have the Nidus oh. Worm game. He finally throws it down. Was the illusion still complete, though? Special got a couple mm. more scouts, and I think a laser really wanted him to get. But Special with the double armory, he didn't add on factory super, super quickly. I think the illusion is still there. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. This could end up being the game of our dreams right now. Still poking with those Hellions, not going to be too helpful. If a Nidus pops up in your base, a Marine is patrolling, looking for such things. That Overseer ready to spot for the Nidus. There it is. Will Special realize? Will he react? It looks like his unit's starting to come home. He knows that it's there, but what does he actually do against this? It's only Hellions. He didn't have Cyclones already being made. There he finally has them. Cancels it over he can to get a Liberator, but there are eight Queens that can take care of that. Oh, man. That is a lot of Queens popping out right now. Laying in a Creep Tumor immediately. Roach is coming 
coming out to join them. So few units here, just Hellbats being created. They have to get on top of all these units. Their splash damage does still work out okay mm. against Roaches and Queens, but they have to get up there first. And there's going to be so many transfuses as well. Actually, Specialist Blue, you losing his production oh here. Oh my god, a factory already falling. The SCV flank coming in. Auto turrets going down. One of the Ravens falls here as well. A huge surround. But will this be enough? It's all the SCVs that really make this look like more than it is. But the Cyclones did pop out, and their DPS is helping out so much. 20 SCVs is something that Special can definitely deal with. And remember, a laser just lost a lot of his production. All of his queens are going to die here. And Special does hold, but wasn't good enough. Uh, I'm not so sure, really. Like, when you look at the worker count, 28 to 30, a laser took a ton of damage earlier on. Now his queens are all gone, and that's it. GG is called Special advances to the round of four. Special holding a night is all in on Acolyte. Certainly something that he could have expected, but oh, a laser crushed. Just, I mean, it, we heard from uh, him before, you know, he felt confident that he could make it all the way, even to the finals here of BlizzCon. Such a strong player, a tournament winner in 2017, but unable to stop the might that is Special's Terran. Laser started off with a lot of momentum in that game number one. Looked like he had a couple of tricks to go up against the Beast, but it is what it is. Special takes the 3-1, and we're going to hear from our victor now. Congratulations, Special, at your first WCS Global Finals ever. You're already in the top four. This is the only second time that a non-Korean has been able to do this. Tell us, how do you feel right now? Uh, I'm very happy. I was very nervous for somehow. I played a little bit sloppy, so I hope it doesn't happen in round of four. I heard a rumor that prior to this match, you were feeling like so confident that you might even be able to 3-0 a laser. What did you do for preparation that made you feel this confidence? I don't know. I feel like my TBC is very good at the moment, so that's why I feel very confident. And I have good builds and good ideas of what I should do, so that's why I felt very confident. Well, starting from the opening week group, you've been performing so well, impressing everybody when you top that group over Stats and TY. Up next, it's going to be either Sue or Gumio, both obviously fantastic players, but how do you think that will go? Uh, I, I really hope Sue wins because uh, he's my very good friend and I help him practice and he helped me practice so I just hope he wins. So yeah, I hope that he wins. <laughs> well, congratulations again and Special is our first player in the top four here at the WCS Global Finals. Bye.